I'm Tyler Suters and you're watching Clean Skies News. There is a new entrant into the energy water nexus discussion, a device that its manufacturer promises will create water out of thin air. Joining us now from Miami is Henry James Thielman. He is the CEO of that company, Ecola Blue. And Henry James, thanks for being with us today. No, thank you. I think it's a very nice opportunity that you are giving me and, and, and my company to uh, actually try to explain a little bit more thoroughly what, uh, what we do. Well, let's dive right in. Uh, is it safe to say that what you're doing is essentially condensing water just on a very large scale? Yes, indeed. We, we have uh, around uh, our environment uh, in the house and outside uh, what we call humidity, moisture. And basically with the machines that we manufacture, <clears throat> we can extract that moisture and filter it and be able to drink it. Oh, what makes this any different from a huge dehumidifier? As you said, a number of basements, especially here on the East Coast, deal with this kind of technology regularly. So what's the breakthrough here? Right, you, you, you're very correct. The de a dehumidifier, or at least its process, has been in the market for over 40 years. Um, nevertheless, if you uh, would drink, and I would uh, seriously not recommend to drink any dehumidifier water, um, this is where we come in. Uh, that is with very sophisticated filtration system and implementing also uh, air conditioning processes so that you can have uh, hot and cold uh, drinkable water. Uh, how well does this perform in some very low humidity atmospheres? I think of places like Africa or maybe parts of uh, desert climates where water is such a, in, in such scarce supply, yet even the water in the air seems difficult to get to. Yes, that, that is correct. Um, but nevertheless, in most of the world at any point in time, uh, you have a certain amount of humidity that is uh, giving us an opportunity to extract that, that specific moisture and allow uh, people anywhere in the world to, to drink that kind of, of water. Mm -hmm. um, in essence, it's simply that the nature is not allowing to, to, to make it rain. And so we are taking away basically the, 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 the existent rain that is not taking place mm -hmm. um, in a very small uh, scale, obviously. Uh, but allowing uh, a lot of people to be able to have access to potable water. Uh, one advantage that you have regarding hot, hot to dry climates and performance here is the fact that you're using solar panels to provide a portion of the power necessary. <coughs> and you're also trying to work on hydrogen as a source, which seems to go hand in hand with uh, collecting water since the emission source would be water as well, correct? Yes, that was the, probably the most important problem that we faced when we uh, finished, completed the, the, uh, the, the, the home office or the industrial machine to, uh, to do really what it was supposed to do, that is uh, giving uh, potable water. The energy is, is a requirement. We, we need energy, we need electricity uh, of some kind to run these machines. Uh, so last year, that was basically our main, main focus, is to reduce the energy consumption uh, to a bare minimum. Uh, when we started uh, two years ago, uh, three years ago, we, we had a machine that was consuming, at least the home office, about 500 watts an hour. If you would take uh, uh, solar panels, we would have, and this is what we're offering, three 300 watts panels to run this uh, machine. With the research and development that we have done recently, we have managed to reduce this consumption to only one 300 watt uh, solar panel. That is a reduction, of course, of investment for anyone who would like to, to buy such an application, but it also allows to have a, a simple application uh, with a simple energy source, which is solar, uh, to run these machines. Now, the hydrogen power is also a very interesting uh, concept in the, in, the, in, in the aspect that hydrogen is run by water. And the hydrogen machine that we have in place with the company that we're working with only needs 20 watts, or let's say 10 to 20 watts, uh, to run that, to start up this hydrogen power machine. The hydrogen power machine is actually run and function with water. So we have a plumbing system that would get the water from the water generator into the hydrogen power machine and into uh, getting energy for generating the, the, the water generator. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seems <clears throat> somewhat complicated. Uh, hydrogen power is still a very, uh, in its infancy, it's not uh, uh, quite ready. We're expecting some, some results of the testing sometime next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, if this works, uh, that really would be a, an amazing solution. 
Final question. I'm curious about your partnership with China. Uh, the U.S. government has made very public statements, including through Energy Secretary Stephen Chu, regarding clean energy partnerships with that country. But there have been reports, especially recently, about private sector difficulties, that is, U.S. companies having serious headaches trying to operate in China. Uh, have you run into similar roadblocks yet? Well, uh, I, th I think um, operating in China requires to understand the Chinese culture. Um, I, we have a registered uh, company in China which allows us to work extremely easily in China. And I think that a lot of American companies who are starting up in this um, industry, let's say the energy industry, um, needs to learn a little bit more about the Chinese culture. It's, it's, it's a very different culture. And they have their way of, of operating, they have their way of, of doing business. And if you don't understand it, you're going you're gonna to run into issues or maybe culture issues, which would be the same for Chinese trying to do business in America. It goes both ways. Um, I've been living in China for two years and I find doing business in China very easily. <clears throat> we have uh, a few engineers working with us. We have, of course, a certain amount of, of labor force working uh, with us. And, and the uh, relationship is actually very nice. And we do discuss very often, actually, this, this culture uh, a clash uh, between either Europeans or Americans working in China. And again, it's, it's really to understand to work with different cultures, especially if American companies are going to China. The company is Ocola Blue. The CEO joining us from Miami, Henry James Thielman. Thank you again for giving us your time today. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure, and thank you as well for joining us. I'm Tyler Suters. You're watching Clean Skies News.